Almost. <laughs> yeah, it gets pretty good. <laughs> okay. Everybody ready? Uh -huh. Good. Thank you for being out here. We're at Trinity United Methodist Church in Greenville, one of the hard hit communities in our state. We've been devastated by the, the storm and the aftermath of the storm. And we're on the ground here. Uh, went to the emergency operations center to talk to county mayor, head of the utility district, head of the sheriff's department, the first responders, and the professionals that are executing the response here. But we also know that it's it's not just the response of TEMA and FEMA and local EMA. It's the response of the people and the neighbors and the community church and the volunteers and it's inspiring to see hope intersect with tragedy uh, and, the, and the outcome is, uh, is a good outcome for this community. There's a lot of work to do. There are a lot of challenges here. Uh, we have a lot of effort being made. We have, as you know, hundreds of uh, National Guardsmen in the region, including 100 in this county. We have 400 TDOT workers that are scouring the region to repair roads, assess bridges. Uh, we have uh, officials from one end of the county to the other here and then the other affected counties, but uh, this is encouraging. So yesterday there was a major disaster declared in several of our areas, not Green County. How do you think that's going to change things from your end? So that, that disaster declaration allows for reimbursement from the federal government for expenses that people make in their uh, in the in the aftermath. So it, it is paperwork that impacts funding. Uh, it came quickly, and we were grateful for that. We we asked for it quickly, which was important. The most important thing is to have a quick response, and then follow up with. The declarations that lead to funding that come after the three applicants. And you've been on the ground here a couple of times. What's been the biggest change that you've seen over the last several days as you're You know, I think um, we've certainly seen the number of people without power dramatically decrease. We've seen the number of people without water decrease. In this county, for example, the vast majority of this county has no water at this point, but the work that has been done by the local utility district uh, and, and support, the work that's been done means that within the next few days, we expect that there will be water here if things go well. That's a big change, and it will be a dramatic change for this county. Uh, sadly, we've seen uh, you know, loss of life. The, un the unaccounted for person count is dropping. We're, we're accounting for individuals, and that's something that's tragic and difficult, but the resolution of that's important. What I've seen, you ask about what's changed in the last three or four days, and I've been coming every other day. Uh, forward progress. Forward progress in every step of the way and every meaning and every sense of the word, uh, forward progress is happening. We're tight on time today. Does anybody else? Yep. Yep. Governor, what is your top priority in response right now in these meetings? Uh, we, we, we have agreed across all state departments that this is a survivor-centric response. Our top priority are those who have survived uh, the tragedy that has befallen them, whether it is a lost family member, a lost home, the loss of water, the loss of employment, whether temporarily or permanent, they're survivors. And Tennesseans are survivors, but our response is survivor-centric, and that, that is our focus right now, is finding and making sure that everyone who has been impacted and has survived uh, the outcome of this terrific storm on our state, that those survivors 
are finding their way to the supplies and the supports that are necessary for them to, to move forward. Governor, we saw the briefing yesterday that obviously this is weighing heavy on you and so many officials. W what does it feel like when you come and see the damage that yeah. you've seen so far? It's hard because you interact with people and you're reminded that these are real lives that are being lost, that have been lost. These are real families that are being uh, affected in some time, in some ways, for the rest of their lives. And when you talk face to face with people, you're affected and impacted by that. It's not something off in the distant in another place. Uh, these are real life people that are being, whose lives are being changed. So it inspires me. It inspires our team. I think you saw in the press briefing yesterday, our team of director becoming emotional, talking about how important it is that we serve these Tennesseans. Our, our team and the local teams here are inspired. We, we know these are real people. We know these are communities that are hurting. And we know that it is our job uh, to have this survivor-centric response. And uh, that's what's happening across the state. So there's been a lot of you know, misinformation going on. So what would you like to say to the know I think what's most important is that uh, the heart behind and the professionalism behind the agencies, whether it is uh, the local sheriff's department, whether it is TEMA, whether it is FEMA, uh, we care most about the survivors of this incident. And, you know, be very cautious about misinformation. The government is not taking resources. Uh, if it doesn't seem to make sense, it's probably not happening. I realize there's a lot of, and there's even foreign influence that's trying to impact the information that goes out to our people. Uh, the people in this state are wholeheartedly focused on the survivors in this state, and we uh, will we'll continue to do that, and we will not pay attention to the misinformation.